If you're anything like me, then you probably use Docker at least sometimes for work. Also, if you're anything like me, you definitely forget all the commands you need to remember in order to maintain all of your Docker containers and images. Quick, how do you delete a Docker image you don't want on your system anymore? Well, you could do something like Docker images to list all of the images that you currently have on your system. Then you'd have to grab an ID and run Docker RMI with the force tag to make sure you can force delete this image. You paste the ID, hit enter, and there you go. You have then deleted the image. And I don't know about you, but I really don't remember all these commands all that well all the time. But what if I told you there was a tool that could seamlessly and easily enable you to manage all your Docker stuff with just a couple of key presses right in your terminal? You think I was lying, right? You think I was crazy, right? Well, I'm not crazy and I'm not lying. It's called Lazy Docker. Check it out. With Lazy Docker, I can see all of my current containers and I can also see the ones that are stopped. I can toggle between running and stopped containers. I can also check out all the images I currently have on my system and I can see all my volumes and my networks and I can do all of these different things to all of my images and containers for management with Docker. So hold on to your containers. This episode's about lazy Docker. Let's get into it. Lazy Docker is an amazing tool created by Jesse Duffield. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because he also happens to be the creator of another tool I use all the freaking time, Lazy Git. I mean, seriously, this guy's just cranking out twoies all over the place, which is a sentence I didn't think I'd ever say, but here we are. Lazy Docker is, as I mentioned, a TUI, which is a terminal UI application. Now that's great for me because I am someone who loves spending time in the terminal, which for me is ghosty, by the way. And being someone who uses the terminal all day, I love using TUIs. And Lazy Docker is, without a doubt, the best tool for using Docker with my workflow in the terminal. So let's go ahead and install Lazy Docker and show off how to set it up and how to get going with it. Now with Lazy Docker, as with many other programs, there are many different ways to install it on your system. I have found for me that the easiest way to install Lazy Docker, if we go to the installation section of the GitHub repository, is to just use the bash script. That's the simplest one for me. Now, depending on your platform, there are many different ways you can install Lazy Docker. If you're on Mac, you can just use Brew. It's on Brew. If you're on Windows, you can use Scoop. I don't use Windows, so I wouldn't really know too much about that. And then if you are on uh, any other system, you can use things like ASDF, which I personally love ASDF, but for me, I think the most straightforward way to install Docker is using this bash script under binary releases. This is the most straightforward way for me. You can just copy this and then paste it into your terminal, and this will install the latest binary for lazy Docker, and you are all set to go. Now, back when I was learning Docker before this video, I made sure to study a little bit about Docker every every single day. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do both for personal and professional growth. Brilliant helps you build real world knowledge in minutes a day. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. And for those of you aspiring programmers watching this video, Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real world applications. For instance, you could learn Python, which just so happens to be one of the most popular languages by building real world applications on day one using Brilliant's built in drag and drop editor. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash typecraft or scan the QR code on the screen. Or you can click the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. All right, now let's get back to Lazy Docker. Now, after you've installed Lazy Docker, you can just type Lazy Docker and you are put into this TUI. This is a terminal UI. And when you first launch the program, the first thing you'll see are a bunch of sections in your terminal with a bunch of information. Now, don't be overwhelmed because this is pretty straightforward and not too hard to move around in. And I find that you can get used to it really quickly. We can see at the bottom here, there are instructions for how to move around. You can use your arrow keys, which is pretty straightforward. I do right and left to go amongst these sections and then up and down to go up and down the different pieces of each 
each section. But for me, of course, I'm a Vim user, so I use my HJKL keys, which are also available in this program. So I go H is left, and that goes up. L is right, and that will go down each section. And then my J and K keys, which is up and down, will move up and down each section's items. Now that's pretty straightforward and really fun to use. So now we have some containers, and we have images, and we have all this stuff on our system. How do we manage it using Lazy Docker? Well, it's very similar to Lazy Git. If you are in a section, like see, I'm in my container section here, and I don't know exactly what to do, I can just push question mark. The question mark key will open up a little floating window that shows me all the different actions I can take within this section. So in the container section, we can see that D will remove a container. E will hide or show stopped containers, which is actually helpful for me because I have a lot of stopped containers. So if I just type E, there we go. I'm only looking at my currently running containers. Now go back to question mark to see what else I can do. P will pause a container, S to stop, R to restart, A to attach. There's all these different commands that you can use through Lazy Docker. And the best part is all Lazy Docker does is it just wraps the command line for your commands that you would normally use in Docker. So there's no real magic here. It's just running the commands that we did much earlier in this video, but with a nice pretty UI, so it's easier to see what you're doing. So now I have a bunch of images and a bunch of containers that I kind of want to get rid of. So how about I just get rid of an image like I showed earlier in this video? How do you do that in Lazy Docker? Well, I go down to my images section and I hit question mark to see what I can do with these images. I see that D will remove the image, so I hit D to remove this image and then remove force will remove this image just like I did earlier in the video with the force flag. So if I select that, the image is now removed and that's it. It's just that simple to manage your stuff with Docker in Lazy Docker. Okay, so now let me take you through a little bit more of a end to end workflow with Lazy Docker here. I have in this repository a Docker file and the Docker file really just runs a very simple web application. Let me show you how it works. This Docker file will install Node 14. It will set the working directory in the container to user source app. It will install packages, run npm install, do all that stuff to build this Docker image. And at the end, when the image is running, it will call node app.js. Now, what is app.js? Well, it is just a very, very simple express server that responds to the hello endpoint with what's up nerds. That's all there is to it. So let's just see how this works in an end to end sort of flow using lazy Docker. So in this application, I want to build this container and I want to tag it with, I don't know, something. And I want the directory to be our current working directory because that is where this Docker file exists. So I can build this Docker file. And because I built this before, it built it really, really fast because all these layers were cached, but you know. So now if I open up Lazy Docker, I should be able to see a new image in the list of images on my system. And here it is. This is the something image at the latest tag. Fantastic. This is the image that I just built. Now, if I want to run this image and then check it out in Lazy Docker, I can do Docker run the something image if I could type at the latest tag and this image is now running on localhost 3000. So now in order to run this image, we can type Docker run something at the latest tag and we see that our server is now running on localhost 3000. Okay, so now let's open up lazy Docker and see what we find. Okay, interesting. So we have our container running on our localhost 3000 and it looks like our logs are right here. Cool. So let's see if we can curl this endpoint and see what we get. So now really quick, let's show off an end to end workflow with lazy Docker. Now, if I want to run the image that I just built, I can type Docker run and I want to specify my port mapping of 3000 to 3000 because it's listening on port 3000 and I can run the something image at the latest tag. And now it is running on localhost 3000. Great. So if I open up lazy Docker, I can see now that I have a running container in my containers list. This is fantastic. Okay, so now let me actually curl this endpoint and see what I get. I can type curl HTTPS localhost 3000 slash hello. This is the endpoint that should respond with something. So now let me visit localhost 3000 slash hello. 
And I can see I get what's up nerds. That doesn't look great, but I mean, shoot, it's just an example, right? And now I can go back to Lazy Docker and I can see in my logs that it says snakes. That is a log that I put into my program. I sneakily threw it in there just to see what the logs would look like on Lazy Docker. So if I have Lazy Docker open, I can actually see a live update of my logs and it's just fantastic. Now I can also stop this container by typing S while I'm over this container, hitting enter saying, yes, I want to stop this container. And eventually the container is stopped. And of course, now I can go down and find the container that I was running and I can actually delete this container if I want. And I can remove it with the volumes and now that container is deleted. And of course, if I also want to delete the image because I'm trying to keep my system sort of tight and I don't want too much stuff in it, I can hit D on the something with the latest tag. I can remove that. It'll delete any of the parents of this image and it is all set. So Lazy Docker is amazing. Jesse Duffield, you're just on an absolute tear with these twoies. Everyone check it out. Be sure to subscribe if you want to learn more about Linux, Vim, all these terminal tools, and hey, thanks nerds.